up, family? Let's go, let's go. It's out here just chilling. Just gonna get a good build on. Trinidad and Tobago, what's up? Glad to have you guys on. You know, I want to build with you guys the constant talk that I'm always hearing about these stocks. Let me talk to you guys. Let me see if I can get this phone to. Yeah, this is about to be dope if I don't have to touch it. That's great. Hey, what's up? How y'all doing? How are we doing this most wonderful day, man? Any day that you're alive is a blessing. Let me say that. If you're alive, it's a blessing. Now, what I want to talk to you guys about. Oh, yeah. Thank y'all for tuning in on Instagram yesterday with my brother Jim Jones, legendary rapper. And, you know, during this quarantine, I talked to a lot of my celeb friends. They said, yo, I want to I wanna get you guys on, do some interviews. But when y'all do the interviews with me, Let's do the knowledge. Let people see the other side that I know. You know, when I when I deal with people, I don't change who I am. I do the knowledge. So when I'm connecting with people, we always having more higher frequency builds. It don't be too much of the nigga talking activity. So we're gonna do a little bit of that and we're gonna have fun while we do it. But at the same rate, I'm not built like that to talk about things I wouldn't normally talk about for extended periods of time just because I'm in the company of other people. I remain me. And so I think it's very important. I know it to be very important for you to see good brothers and sisters from the entertainment industry actually show you that they do think about things that concern us as a people. And in fact, their ideas are very valid, very plausible, and need to be and should be considered. So I just want to get my brothers and sisters from the sports, music, and entertainment industry an outlet to discuss things that on other outlets generally they would never discuss. You know, I want to talk to them about religion. I want to talk to them about this COVID-19 and possible conspiracy theories. And, and there's nothing wrong with having a conspiracy theory. Let me say that. There's nothing wrong with speculating. As long as we're honest and we're able to identify this as a speculation. Or this is what I believe to be a conspiracy that's transpiring. Because this country is no stranger to conspiracies that they facilitated. And in addition to that, let's be for real. Let's be all the way 100 with the situation. All the way. It keeps the mind working. If you get conditioned to the point you don't know how to ask questions about things that's proposed to you, you just accept whatever's given to you. I'm gonna stay on the side of the conspiracy theorists the most because at least they're gonna say something and make you consider, what, you believe that? Yeah, I wonder why he or she thinks that. It keeps you thinking. But what, what it is when it, when I'm, what is it when another person just accepts anything versus another person that just doesn't accept anything? I'm going to take the person who doesn't just accept anything every day of the week. Because I want to constantly keep my wheels spinning in my head because I don't want nobody to get the drop on me and pull a sucker move and I just fall for anything, the old okie doke, because I'm so used to not thinking that now that's my programming. I don't even consider if someone might be telling me a story or a lie. The only time we get into conspiracy theories is when someone's teaching us about money. That's the only time we start worrying about conspiracy. If someone teaches us about money, nah, that can't be real, that can't be true. Now we gonna start thinking about all the ways that it couldn't possibly be true. Anything else, we don't apply the same work ethic. We only do it when it comes to money because we believe we don't deserve the opportunity to make that much money. That's the problem, okay? Yeah, class is right there. I actually put it there at the bottom. <clears throat> Gold in the crisis. Gold in the crisis. It's this Sunday. Part one's already done. You're gonna get that upon payment immediately. The system is automated where you get your link, your 
links, I should say, in your PDF. But we have class coming this Sunday. It's going to be phenomenal. But let me get to this. BPB 10 system. There's a BPB 10 system that I created when it comes to dealing with these stocks. And people rocking out crazy. <laughs> Having fun. And I'm going to teach it during the class. But it ain't, it ain't nothing that deep. It's just an, an approach like other people got approaches. You know? And in my approach, my approach comes with a philosophical perspective. But it only makes a small percentage of what I'm doing. But perspective in general is everything. If you got great perspective, it provides for the necessary conviction you need when you invest in your money. It's all about perspective. So people be talking to me about losing money. They be talking about losing money. And I be like, somebody, somebody told this sister I was talking to, hey, you know, don't deal with those stocks. I was doing it for 10 years. So I said, let me ask you something, sister. They was doing it for 10 years? Yes. How long you knew them? Was it over 10 years? She said, yeah. In the 10 years you knew them, did they ever tell you anything about stocks and how to make money from it? She said, no. They was doing it for 10 years and knew you and said nothing about it. You started working with me and they tell you don't do it at all. You don't think it's a little suspect? She started laughing. I said, that's not it. That ain't it. We're going to keep going. That's not it. What the hell was they doing in 10 years? Was they losing for the whole 10 years? Was they struggling the whole 10 years? Or was they doing something that made sense for 10 years and then something else happened? I need to know these things. What was their strategy? Was they day trading? Was they swing trading? Did they employ any deep options? Did they have any futures? Uh, what, what, how, how did they manage their position? You know, I, I just want to know. Did they use put options, call options? I don't, I want to know what the hell was they doing and what combination was they doing it in for them to tell somebody not to do it. But I did it for 10 years. <laughs> so either the person's lying, right? Or they gambled too much because they didn't understand the many things you could do to secure yourself. I spent so much money protecting my investment that when I win it cuts into my investment but it ensures that I always win that's the BPP 10 system real talk but that ain't even it that's not even it yeah the website is I am brother polite dot app purchase your class and you be good money purchase your class you have class Sunday and you'll be able to catch up on what you missed. All of that is going to be sent to you as soon as possible. Class is $99. If you're in this coronavirus and you come out of this thing broke, I'm feeling sorry for you. Yesterday, American Airlines went down to $10.04. Today, it went as high as $10.61. Right now, it's back down to $10.35. Needless to say, on every share, you would make at least 50 cents on every share today if you were sold at the 1061 mark. Boom. It had been a nice little swing trade. 50 cents on each share. If you bought 200 shares, you made 100. If you bought 500 shares, you made 250. It's not bad. 50 cents on every share. That's a light day because I'm still expecting this thing to go back up to $12, $13. You mark my words. When it does that, then we, we cooking on a swing trade. But people that tell you it's too risky. Then if it's risky, put your money on the risk. What we don't understand is what I was talking about yesterday is that you got people out here. Yeah, it's online. The class is online. You go to the website, you purchase the class, you will get an email with the link to view it. Yeah. This Sunday, we got another one coming. It's going to be off the chain. When you hear, oh, the stock market is doing bad, it's horrible. Who's it doing bad for? Because if things are more affordable than they've ever been before, because stocks that used to be $200 is $20. Stocks that used to be $500 is $80. Stocks that used to be $80 is $6. That's a good thing for people who have less of money. So you gotta understand who's controlling the narrative. You gotta understand who's controlling the narrative. You can't be here 
just listening to people blowing in the mic, the wind blowing in the mic. Can y'all hear me good? Or is it too much wind? Damn. Too much wind? Tell me if you can hear me good now. Hold on. Can you guys hear me good right now? Press 9 if you can hear me good enough. All right, great. So you got to understand who's controlling the narrative. You got to understand who's controlling the narrative. You can't just be here listening to people tell you that the market is bad. The market is bad. You got to understand who the market is bad for. The market is good for you. The market is good for you. Stop letting people play push the old okie doke on you, hoodwink you, make you hold the Lizzie bag and get caught. <laughs> when you're trying to run out the store after steaming it up, stop letting them do that to you. They try, they they playing a game and they're attempting to sun you to keep you in the same impoverished condition or the same. You don't have to be impoverished, but they looking to keep you in the same non. Uh, they trying. They looking to keep. I don't want to use the word try. So if you hear me stumbling on my words, lately I've been using that word uh, try. Try has been attempting to reestablish itself in my vocabulary, and these sentences work just fine without the word try. So pardon me, so if I'm sounding choppy, it ain't the wind, it's me, because I don't intend to use certain words, because words are our GPS to reality. So I can create a stronger and more fortified existence, provided I use words that are to the point and more exact, based on what my goals are, based on what my ambitions are. So good, I just got that glitch out of my system. <laughs> But just understand who's controlling the narrative. So the, the next thing we got to discuss, let me give you an example. If I buy a stock that's a dollar a share, and I'm, I'm looking for me to make 20 cents, I want to I wanna buy and sell every time it goes up 20 cents. When I sell, I want to wait for it to go down another 20 cents. Or... I may buy it again where it's at if I think it's an uptrend. So based on the up or the downtrend, I'm going to buy it each time. Hopefully I can get away with this. Let's say, hopefully I can do this inside of a, the market opens at 9.30 a.m. and closes at 4. So hopefully I can do this four or five times a day with $500. Hopefully I can make 20 cents as the market's going up and down. There's, there's markets there. People ask, why are you always talking about American Airlines? Because I need to exhaust all the different things that you can do with that one share for the people that listen to me for free. It's not the only thing that I understand. However, when I'm talking to people, even my students from the class we're doing on Sunday, when I'm talking to people, it's imperative that you understand that... You can do any of a number of things with the same stock. So why I need to bounce around and people get confused. I say AAL one week. I say BA the next week. I say RCL the next week. No, I'm staying on American, especially for my free classes. When I'm doing this free online thing and we getting busy, when I'm doing my thing online for free, I just want to keep it as consistent as possible. We use AAL as a case study. You type it in Google right now, AAL, and you'll see what the trends are and so let's say I put my money in a stock that's a dollar and all I want to do is make 20 cents and when I make 20 cents I'm gonna sell and then I want to see if I can make another 20 cents during the day off the same stock and I want to see if I can make another 20 cents the same day off the stock hopefully I could do it let's say I could do it four times between 9 30 a.m. and 4 p.m. When the market is open, that doesn't include crypto. Crypto is always available. Between 9.30 a.m. and 4 o'clock p.m., I want to be able to make 20 cents at least four times during the day. I think that's fair. I, even if you don't understand much, you should be able to understand that's possible. Even if you don't know much, stocks is going up and down, up and down, up and down throughout the day. Yeah, there's plenty of stocks, millions of stocks that go up 20 cents, up another 20 cents, or up 20 cents, goes down 30 cents, goes up 50 cents, goes down 30 cents. But I just want to follow a 20 cent rule. I just want to focus on 20 cents. That's the vibe I'm on right now. I'm day trading. I want to buy and sell on the same day, buy and sell the same day, buy and sell the same day. That's what I want to do. And I only want to focus on 20 cents at a time. 
okay? And I got $500 to play with. Because we're going to talk about this losing idea. So, I see, I see something for 80 cents. I buy it at 80 cents. It goes up $1.10. I'm only focused on making 20 cents. I'm going to keep it at 20. Boom. My first 20 cents. I, I put $500 in, so I got 500 shares. I put $500 in, so I got 500 shares. Okay? When I successfully buy and make 20 cents each share from $500 I put in, I made $100. I'm going to see if I could do this again. Oh, shit. I was able to do it again. Another 20 cents. I made another $100. So, so far, my $500, I threw it in the seat, and it made me $200 when I reeled it in. Oh, shit. I did it five times. It's very possible to make 20 cents profit off a of stock five times in one day. It's extremely possible. So, that one $500... I made 20 cents five times that day off it. I made $500. I made the same amount of money I threw in there. I take the original 500. I could make it a thousand now. Right? I could make it a thousand now. I can make $200 on every thousand. And then when I get up to 10,000, I can make $2,000 on every 10,000. So idealistically, you want to make enough money to keep in there so you can keep fishing. You, you're putting money in so you can pull money out. And fuck it. You could do this 10 cents at a time. Instead of making 100, you just make 50. It's still doing more than your, what you would have did if you left $500 in your bank. If I do 10 cents at a time, I'm making $50. If I do 20 cents at a time, I'm making $100. 10 cents and 20 cents is very easy to make five times in one day day trading on the market of course they ain't gonna teach you this shit in school pardon the word shit because this ain't shit what we learned in school was shit they ain't gonna teach you this in school okay and so I use $500 to make me $100 every time I win and I make 20 cents a share the stock goes up 20 cents I make $100 because I put 500 in it the stock goes up 20 cents again wow and so I'm going to do this five times. Let's say this can happen five times because my nine to five is being on the stock market, but it's actually a nine thirty to four. It's very possible for this to happen. Twenty cents at a time. Five times. In one day. It's very possible. I hope y'all walking with me. OK, so this is day trading. Where you do it outside of the day, but you're still closing in. Inside of some hours, 24, 48, 72 hours, for Friday, it's swing trading. We ain't even talking about that yet. But it's just, it's like day trading, but it just takes a little longer because you're looking for more money over the on the dollar. That's most times what you will wait so long for. But sometimes day trading will make you. A lot of times day trading will help you accumulate what you're waiting a couple days for on a swing trade. So it's just preference or you know what? I, I still want that on a swing. But I'm going to do these right here on the day. And it's the same stock. I'm playing with it. But anyway. Let's get back. Let's not, let's not lose focus. Because I want to talk about losing. If I use $500. And I used it to reel me in $500. I take my principal. And I put it back where it came from. Let's say I take that same $500. I put it back in the bank. The damn $500. I leave it there for 10 years. It's not going to make me $500. It made me $500 in a few hours on the market. Looking for a 20 cent profit five times in the same day. I'm only looking for 20 cents. I'm only looking for the stock to go up 20 cents. I ain't looking for no big money. Fuck that. Pennies off a millionaires. This is what I've been teaching for years. I didn't just start teaching this. If you bought my pennies off a millionaires book, you, you know I've been teaching this. What do you think I get the idea pennies off a millionaires for? Day trade. It's just stock market in general. <laughs> okay? So... Oh, you get all the apps and everything when I'm when we deal with class. In fact, everybody's still getting a personal call that purchased the course. So I, I give people personal calls if they purchase the course as well, just to make sure everything is set up and what they need to be. But this is like no a no brainer. What I'm explaining to you guys, there's no tricks to it. But 
you make the new 500 from the 500 you put the 500 up put it in the bank and because it's never going to do nothing for you again for the rest of your life until you do something to it but anyway or the bank is going to use it and put it in the market you ain't going to use it and then if you try if you attempt to take it out they're going to shift it around then the bank is going to charge you to hold money in the bank like their arms is getting tired because if you don't use it x amount of time seven or 15 times or 12 times in a month then they're going to charge you so they're looking to make a profit off you storing your money there so why don't you make a profit off your own money but anyway it's another conversation we have successfully learned that on every 10 cents per 500 dollars we can make 50 dollars or on every 20 cents per 500 dollars with each share being a dollar at a time we can make 20 dollars i mean pardon me one uh 100 so we do it five times we make 20 cents five times during the day we make 500 dollars we made our 500 dollars back we take the original 500 called principal we put it in the bank so it could do nothing for us for the rest of our life for the for 20 years it'd probably be 500 and half a cents in 20 years that's what that 500 would be worth in the bank if you do nothing to it you let it sit we take the new 500 what if we put we got the 500 in the market but damn this stock is just got me like i don't even like it no more i'm gonna just i'm gonna just sell early get up out of there I'm down to four hundred and thirty dollars. I'm gonna just go somewhere else to another stock because this shit look like it's tanking. Oh, they're about to go bankrupt. I could even be wrong, but it's not moving as fluid as I needed to move. I'm just pulling my money out of that shit, and I'm gonna go somewhere else with this four hundred and thirty dollars that's left. Somebody gonna say, "Well, polite, you just lost seventy dollars." I'm. Saying, I don't even understand what you're talking about. I, I I don't even have a clue what you're talking about. How the hell did I lose seventy dollars? When this whole 500 that I had came from a 500 I still got. So long as I still got that original $500 in the bank, I can never lose money for the rest of my motherfucking life. So long as I'm using this money. And so I use this money, I build it back up to 50. Because I just want to make 10 cents at a time, 20 cents at a time, because I'm scary. Fuck it, I'm scary. And so now I did it again. I made the new 500. I'm going to decide what I'm going to do with that money. I might double it up so now I can do 1,000 at a time. So I can make $200 every time I make 20 cents from $1,000. And I'm going to do that five times so I can make a whole thousand again. And shit, I did this all in the same day. It goes like that. You got days? Yo, listen. You got days where you cooking. And you know what you say to yourself? I should have been moving 10000 at a time. I should have I put a bigger worm on the hook. That's what happens. So anyway... Fundamentally, this is just a short conversation. Fundamentally, you can use the same money for the rest of your life and be active on the market for the next 20, 30, 40 years. And then one day you could lose it all. But when I say lose it all, uh, economic crash, the world goes to an end. Doesn't fucking matter. <clears throat> you know why? Because I had to been doing something with some of the money I've been making. <laughs> You're not going to tell me I left all the money in the market that I've been making. I'm taking some out as I make it. And so even if I'm moving $10,000 at a time and I take a big hit because the larger you go, the hit is bigger. So where the 430 from 500 was a hit, you know, your 10000 might be a $910, I mean a $9,050, uh, which you have left. Difference. But it doesn't fucking matter because the amount of money that the ten thousand dollars has made you no amount of what you so-called could lose can amount to how much you've gained because you worked your way from 430 back to 500 into a paradigm where you're using a ten thousand dollar worm if you lost the whole ten thousand you fishing with by that time you would have made hundreds of thousands of dollars or more already if you lose the 10000 at any point because of strenuous circumstances or the 10000 for some crazy reason, you just, you messed up. I don't know what you did, but it's down to 8000 How could you even consider it a loss when you've been using the same money to make you all that money? Where do you know you could use money to make you money? I don't know nowhere else where I can use money to make me money other than Forex because you're literally putting your money on money and pairing money up with each other. You know, so, you know, 
I just don't know. Like, where can you use money to make your money? I just don't get it. So when people talk about losing, I'm gonna show you another instance, and I ain't really wanna do it for this one. I'm gonna do it for the next, for the next live that I do. <clears throat> I'm gonna talk the same thing when it comes to calls. I'm gonna go through so many different approaches on the stock market. I have to ask people, what the hell are you talking about losing? Once you win, there's no losing. You take your winning money and you build a career off your winning money. And this market is so volatile, it's so shaky that 20 cents keeps happening over and over. 30 cents keeps happening over and over. 40 cents keeps happening over and over. The market is so fucked up to the people who have bigger money to make larger dollars at a time. They don't do this nickel and diamond that I'm telling y'all to do. Okay? They spend lots of money on things we can't afford to own over 100 times. Because the thing is this. You want to be able to own something a thousand times. You want to own something at least 500 times. So when it goes up a dollar, that's 500, 500 times a dollar. 500 times a dollar. When it goes up $10, you want to say, oh, that's 10 times 500. I made $5,000. Boom, sell it, bring it back, do it again. I made another $5,000. You're not always going to be doing 20 cents at a time now, people. But you're going to build up your worm to become a $10,000 worm so you can play the game and make your five, eight, ten dollars at a time. That's what you're gonna do. You're gonna build it up. And then now where you was doing 20 cents, you're gonna take it to the level where, yo, this stock over here, I got enough money to play with a stock that's gonna give me 10, 12 dollars. And that don't even represent it doubling. But I got enough money where I could buy 500 shares of a stock that's gonna make me five to seven dollars on each share. So I can start multiplying my 500 times seven. And then sell it and do it again. Sell it and do it again. See, people keep asking, yo, where you making money from? Nah, he got to be doing something grimy. He got to be doing something shady. He got to be taking something from people. Yo, I'm too smart to be broke and it costs way too much money to be poor. It just don't make no fucking sense. I know incredibly too much. And when you check out what I'm teaching, you'll say, yo, if all I, all I have to ever do in my life was get $500 in my pocket and I would never need nothing from nobody. I just disappeared for two, three months, especially in this market. And I'm good money. That shit is free money. That shit is free money. And I ain't even get to you with the critical mathematics because it, it gets critical. The more, the more you want to do a 360 behind the back, through the, through the legs, throw it off the back wall, alley-oop. Uh, it gets tricky. And you're going to want to start playing around. You get busy after a while. You just got to start from somewhere. Start from 10 cents or 20 cents at a time. Put a hundred fucking dollars up in there and, and, and make your effort to make 10 cents on each dollar so you can make $10 on every hundred dollars. And every 10 times you do it, boom, now you done made your hundred dollars back. Put the old one up. You can never lose because you're only using your winnings. If you're using winnings, you never lose. I don't give a fuck if your winnings go down to $60 and, you, and it was a hundred. How could you have lost? It's Monopoly money now. Remember when you used to play Monopoly? You got that bread. When you had the right amount of money in your pocket, you wasn't scary. You was like this. But I tell you, put the right amount of money in the market, you'd be mad scary. Because you're so much worried about, you're so worried about losing, you're not even using the mathematics to realize the law of probability. You're not even using the mathematics to say, how much times would this thing go up 10 cents or 20 cents throughout the day? And if I got the patience today just to watch and wait for something to... And you know what? You can set your phone to an alert. When something drops 20 cents, you buy it. Pow. Okay, when it goes up 20 cents, you sell it. This is what you do. You set your phone up to execute the trade on purpose for you. It's 2020. You can set the trade up. Nobody's using their hands and writing shit out no more. It's, it's fucking stupid to be broke right now. You're, you're a real jackass if you're going to be broke after this coronavirus. And shit go back to normal where it's not affordable to do this type of shit. Right now, you can do it. Right now, you can do it. Pardon the word shit. Right now, you can do it. You'd be a real jackass if you leave the situation broke. What, you afraid to spend $99 for a class that's going to teach you how to take the same $99 to go to the next level? I done already gave you enough game for you to do what you got to do. I just give you more technical science and show you different approaches, spin moves, pivot step. You know what I'm saying? Pivot foot, first step. You know what I'm saying? So you can blow past cats. That's all that is, but this ain't rocket science. It really ain't. They could have taught us this. My daughter does this. My daughter takes 40% of her allowance. 
and her allowance is from what she earns from her businesses. But I, as her father, I got to just make sure she don't squander her bread. So she takes 40% of her earnings, and then she puts it into the economy, and she plays with it. She's doing this from young, just playing. Daddy, I made $320 today. On what? Take a look at that. Because <laughs> sometimes it makes sense for me to go where she's at. <clears throat> yeah, that's right. Use the indicators. When you put the indicators on, stop calling us names. Man, cut, stop fucking crying. This is this is stock market talk. You got to have tough skin. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't tighten up from someone calling you names, I ain't call you names. The coronavirus scare is not over. I said you're a jackass if when this virus is over, you're broke. So if you think I'm calling you a name, that means you you can you made a prophetical account of you being a jackass in the future because you're poor in the future. You still got time. You you over here already sold yourself short and think you lost. I ain't called nobody a name. I said you are a jackass. If you come out this coronavirus and you still poor or you ain't got no money or you're not wealthier than you was. And that's a fact. It's a fact. You have to be mentally impaired to allow someone to share this information with you and then do nothing with it. That's a fact. I got it pinned to the top, family. It is I am brother polite dot app. That's where you pay for your class. It's this Sunday. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not out here. If I felt like y'all was so dumb. And jackasses and stupid I wouldn't be talking to you I'm saying it'd be incredibly slow To come out of this Poor What you taking them stimulus checks Don't you know that's a tax credit Don't you know they're paying you with your own money Oh you ain't got to pay your rent for three to six months But don't you know when the three months come Or the six months come That forbearance that they gave you The, mo the lenders still want the money back Nobody gave you no free money this whole damn time. The only people getting bailed out are the big businesses. The poor people and small businesses ain't getting shit that they ain't got to pay back. Now, I ain't arguing with nobody. But I, I like the challenge because the adversity makes me speak with more conviction. I like when I'm speaking like this anyway. But I just can't turn it on like that. I need somebody to push a button, so I'm good. Well, sometimes I push my own freaking buttons just thinking about stuff. But this is good. It's good stuff. Wear it up. You put that bread in the bank. And that shit do nothing. Or this economy really go to hell and then they say, yo, my bag, you know, even though it's FDIC insured, it ain't insured against this bullshit. <clears throat> Wear it up. Class is always over an hour and a half. It's not about the amount of time class is, though. This is about the knowledge. But, yo, let me let me tell you this. I, I'm supposed to get off by now, but let me tell you this. Because <clears throat> there's no losses. That's what I'm telling you. BPB 10. BPB 10. It's a base 10 system. Put everything in 10. If you do something 10 times. If you do something 10 times. This is my BPB 10 system that I'm going to be teaching Sunday anyway. You do something 10 times. Base 10. If you do something 10 times, right? How many times do you get it wrong? What's the probability that, that favors your disadvantage? Not the probability that favors your advantage. In the worst case scenario, if I do something 10 times, how many times can I be right? What if I can only be right two times out of 10 on my worst day, on my worst chain of events? This is how I eliminate the word loss. If I do something 10 times, on what occasion would you be willing to lose eight times out of 10? I would be willing to lose eight times out of every 10 if the one time I'm right pays for all the other times I'm wrong. And if I'm right twice, I make my profit. But what if if you write once, you not only make your profit, but you also pay for the other nine times you may be wrong. And of course, this is a probability that favors your disadvantage, meaning the worst you can possibly do is 2 out of 10. Correct. Okay? Yeah, I know we're not all men. Sister, listen. 
right now <clears throat> this is that market talk this this is me talking on that right now this the, the economy is bearish and, I, and i'm getting you guys going your bully when you get a coach a coach can't hold your hand and kiss your boo-boo and everything i'm not talking to you as a chauvinist i'm talking to you as a student i'm not i'm not talking to nobody as though they are male or female i'm just talking to you as a student you be a jackass if you leave this coronavirus poor if you focus on that level of aggression because what I want you to do is say just like you, the, I don't want you saying don't call me names I want you to say I'm not a jackass and that's supposed to be equal to I'm not going to sit here and be poor into the exit of this coronavirus scare that's what you do with that that's what a coach does that's what a trainer does we, we want to rile you up we want you to look at yourself differently and say you know what I'm not the person that he's suggesting I might be I'm better than that person we want you to be driven so that's what I mean, sister. I don't mean no disrespect to you. I'm not talking to anybody here as a male or a female. That's not my preoccupation right now. I don't care about that right now. I don't care about your gender right now. I just care about you as my people. <clears throat> okay? That's it. So it's love. I know you're not a guy, but I'm being real with you. I don't want to talk to you as, yo, hey, baby, so what I'm saying is, and then I talk to the brothers, and I go harder with them, and then they get better results because I'm leaning on the brothers and I'm not leaning on the sisters. Sister, y'all out there being single mothers and everything like that, the world is already hard on you. You out there, you ain't got no man in your life, and you got a child, the world is already hard on you. You out there, and you ain't got no job, whether you a male or female, the world is hard on you. I don't need to talk to you soft. So long as I'm giving you a solution, you can understand why the level of aggression. So long as I'm giving you a solution. If I ain't giving you a solution, I'm just talking negative, then you got to get the hell out of this conversation because <laughs> I'm toxic at that point. There ain't no reason to listen to anything toxic because the situation we in as a people is already toxic. <laughs> okay? So that's it. And I'm saying that out of love. You know, don't pick on a sister either, uh, good people. It's, it's a learning experience, learning curve, you know? Uh, different teachers teach different ways, but one thing's for sure. The boxer gets a trainer. The basketball player gets a coach. Everybody gets somebody. And they talk dirty to them to bring out the best in them. Sometimes it's necessary because they're being too soft. When it comes to this money, we don't got nobody to teach us anything. We went to school, they didn't teach you about insurance. We went to school, they didn't teach you about credit. We went to school, they didn't teach us how to fill out an application for a first-time homeowner. They didn't teach us how to pay the bills. They didn't teach us nothing about 30-year fixed-rate mortgage. They didn't teach us nothing. They taught us absolutely nothing, family. Nothing. And that and nothing is a under, nothing is an overestimation for how much they taught us. And you became an adult and you got into this world and you didn't know what to do with yourself. <clears throat> okay? You got in this world as a you couldn't even be a functional adult without being the prey of the traps that they set. They preyed on your demise. By having you believe you was being educated for 14 years from pre-K to 12th grade. They had you thinking you was learning something substantial. They didn't teach you nothing that you could use to weave through this matrix. They didn't teach you nothing about the stock market. You was, you was playing with the math that in a moment's notice if somebody would have made a connection to that in the stock market and how you can make money, you would have paid more attention and you would have stayed in class and you would have been enthused to do your work. But they taught you stock market ideologies and didn't tell you it had anything to do with the stock market itself. So they gave you word problems like something costs a dollar and the profit from each one if sold is 20 cents. How much money will you make if you own 500 of those one dollar products? if each one yields you 20 cents and then you lose twenty dollars and you go on to sell another thirty having bought thirty more back you know like the all those word problems they could have said the word shares they could have said, said profit they can be teaching us about call options and teaching us about leverage margin accounts so we can understand what it means to borrow with somebody else's money. So you can buy shares on margin. So if I, if I got $1,000 in my account, they'll be willing to loan me 1000 
but you got some margin accounts. If you got a thousand dollars in your account, they'll do twenty to one or one to twenty. And so they'll give you twenty thousand dollars for every one thousand you got. Or twenty for every one dollar. That's borrowing on margin. You make a whole lot of money borrowing on margin. Buying shares on margin, pardon me. But then you got to pay them their interest, which is still great. Because if I can borrow some money, it doesn't matter what your credit score is either, people. If I can borrow, some, for the, you know, if you're an accredited investor, that's one thing. And it, it's, it's a lot of nuances to it that really is not that hard. People talking about they need to borrow some money. Shit. They give you that money now. But the problem is now, if you F up the money, uh, they they can sell your holdings. And then the difference, they got to just catch your ass on the street. You don't never want to be in that space, though, on the market. You never want to be in that space. <clears throat> but just teaching it so you can understand money and strategy. It'll make you a better entrepreneur messing around with this market. You know, if they, we ain't go to school and learn about IPOs, initial public offerings. We ain't learn about POCs, proof of concept. We ain't learn about none of these things. None of these things. I, I mean, I dropped out 10th grade. I had to get all my information from successful people. Didn't take no notes. I had to get it on the fly because we on the golf course. I had to get it on the fly because we in a nice restaurant. Hey, this is Brother Polite. Me, him. Yeah, he's a friend of mine. I wanted to introduce him to you. Okay, so what you do for a living? I do comparative studies, my the religions, and retrospective and be influenced by cultures and antiquity. What do you do? I'm an angel investor. A uh, what? I didn't said a whole bunch of a lot. So I said, yeah, angel investor. I didn't know what the hell that was. I had to figure it out. What's that? Oh, I'm a venture capitalist. A uh, what? Who are these people? I never heard these terms. <clears throat> I never knew these were occupations that I could have sought when I was young, attempting to figure out what I want to do with myself later on in the future. See? And I ask questions. I TTP and I TTMP. I talk to people and after that I talk to more people. And I had to learn how to learn without taking notes because I may never see these people again. I had to take what they told me and figure out what the hell they was doing in case I meet another person like that again or if I'm blessed to see them again to go a little deeper into what they do. Because wealthy people always want to know your business. It might be a, a part of your business that can impact them positively. Poor people don't want to know your business and they want to mind their business and they don't, they don't want you asking them nothing because they ain't going to ask you nothing. Wealthy people want to know exactly what you're doing for a living because they want to know if they could integrate themselves into it. Or they can get a friend of theirs to integrate themselves into what you do. So their friend owe them a favor for introducing you to them since you can empower them. That's wealthy people want to curate a network around themselves. Because your network is your net worth. Because if you got enough attorney friends and enough accountant friends, enough managers and publicists, and then the world go round. Because then I just make a call. Yo, I'm in a little jam. Oh, I'm, yo, I, yo, what you need? I got you over here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Real talk. When we didn't go to school, we didn't learn what an accredited investor was. I'm like, before I fill this out and tell you I'm not or I am, I need to ask, what is that? Never mind, sir. This conversation isn't for you. <laughs> so when I do these lives, I share these things just to speed up my good brothers and sisters. Because I know you went to the same schools we I went to. And I know you guys went to colleges I didn't go to and you still don't know a lot of the shit. I know. A lot of you guys got amazing degrees. Amazing degrees. And when you was able to work, you was printing paper at Kinko's. And right now, none of those degrees, most of those degrees don't mean nothing to us right now. Most of those degrees, most of those degrees that you got mean absolutely nothing to you right now during this coronavirus. And you sit in your house, you're gaining more weight, you're getting less exercise. People are like, yo, you outside? Why, what are you doing outside? Why you cover your mouth? Ah. It's just me in the trees because everybody's so silly. Rather than them taking the time out to get more air than they would normally get. You know, people who don't get a chance to see the sun rise. People don't get a chance to see the sunset. You got all this opportunity now. Somehow when they said don't hang around people, I think people thought don't go outside during the daytime. I'm going to the dang park. I spent a lot of my time in the park. I mean, it ain't busy. Very clean. It's just me and the trees and the grass. People are incredibly weird. They just stay in the house. It's 
going to compromise your immunity. You need to be out here and be exposed to some good germs. You need to be out here around the dirt and the trees. You need to breathe fresh air, man. You breathing in what? Alternating current? AC? You got the air conditioning on the crib? What are you doing? It's ridiculous. Come outside. Get some air. Yeah, that's right. Sun has to play a huge role in your diet. The little bit of times you was going outside was to go to work. Now you done cut that out. You just stand in the house. Come on. you gonna. Be, a lot of people going to be extremely sick when this is over. And weird. Now I'm coming outside. I got to still see some kind of activity going on. I got to see plants. I got to see some animals. I can't play games like that. But I'll leave it on this note. So we talked about two out of ten. What if I knew I could just be right at least two times out of ten? And if I'm right just once, it pays for the ten times total that I put my money up on. So next time we build, we're going to talk about options. I might even have a video for the family, free video for the family. I'm, I'm going to do it tomorrow. All options. And the way I'm going to teach it, I'm going to use real estate as an example. And the real estate example I use, most likely it's not going to be too familiar with the people. And that's the beauty of it. Because I could teach two things at the same time. I'm going to use one to explain the other. And in the process, I'll be teaching about both. And that's going to be fun. But I want to definitely talk about options. Because if I, if I, if the, let's say Royal Caribbean is normally $150 a share. If I know Royal Caribbean, a cruise line, a cruise line, ships, people go out and they party. If I know this cruise line is $34 right now. But it normally is $150. When people start doing things again, are people going to go back on ships? Unless the world ends, they're going to go back on ships. So do I think the stock is going to go up a, a year from now or two years from now? I definitely believe that a $34 stock that normally is $150 before this coronavirus, I definitely believe... It may not go to 150 officially. I do believe it's going to go past it and, come and go lower because it's going to be an overcompensation when people realize life is back to normal. However, I say it's safe to surmise that one year, two years from now, that $34 probably be $100, probably be $80. I think it's safe to know what. It's at least going to go up. And equally so, like Zoom, the internet platform that people are using or medium for, to live stream and have more than one person on. <clears throat> Five, six months ago, it was like $40. Right now, Zoom has went as high as $159, $160. Common sense, because more people have to stay home, more people are going to buy streaming devices, like streaming mics. For podcasts, all that technology goes up. So then the people who sell that technology, like Best Buy, B and H, they gonna have an impact as the retailers for the better good. And then internet services such as Zoom, of course it makes sense that a forty something dollar stock goes up to one hundred and sixty dollars. But do I believe a year from now, when things are better, or two years from now when things are better, do I think Zoom stock is gonna go down or up? I believe Zoom is gonna go downwards. Because the demand would be less for people to be outside more. So, there's two things we can gather here. Two years from now, there's some stocks that you know. We could pick 10 stocks that we believe is going to go upward. Like hotels, airlines, cruise lines, right? So, we could do that. And pick seven more things we believe are going to go up. Dave and Busters. Right? And then we could equally pick some stocks we feel going to go down, like Netflix, Zoom. <clears throat> you feel what I'm saying? Because everything don't go up. It's a seesaw. Some things go up when some things go down. They can't exist at the same exact time. That's how this thing works. You got to understand enough current events and how to apply a certain level of common sense. You don't need to be super brilliant to get this figured out. All right. So I can put my money on the fact that I believe something will not cost as much as it does now and the difference between the price it is now and what it may not cost then I can make the profit <clears throat> now that's a put option let's also understand an option means that I have the right to own 100 shares okay I have the right to own 100 shares so I can pay for my right to own 
100 shares of a company. Every option is 100 shares. So if I buy two options, I'm paying for the right to own 200 shares. Here's something I want to explain to you guys, because pennies are familiar this. Let's go back to the American Airlines. They're normally around $50 or something like that, $60, whatever. So, I believe people are going to get back on planes. Two years from now, they're going to be back on planes. One year from, one year from now, they're going to be back on planes. I'm going to pay for the right to say I'm so confident that the stock is going to go up. I'm going to pay for a leap option. I'm going to pay. It's a leap option when you buy deep into the future. You know when you buy deep into the future, you know how much you pay for a share? I'm paying for the right to own 100 shares of a company per option. An option contract is 100 shares. When you buy the right to own 100 shares, called the option. When you buy the right to own 100 shares into the future, when it's far into the future, like a year, two years from now, you know what happens? You can buy the option contract, let's say for three cents. Two cents, one and a half cents. <laughs> so hold on, what are we saying? So let's say, I say, yo, I want to buy an option contract into the future. Let me go a little past a year. I believe this $8 stock that it is today will not be the 140 it normally is, but I believe it's going to be at least $80 in two years, which I know most likely is going to be more than that. They say, okay, shit, if you want to buy that far into the future, how much options do you want? I'll just buy one because I'm going to do this 10 times across the board with nine other companies that I believe have no choice but to go up in the future. So the option contract says it's three cents for this option contract. So basically I'm getting each share, the right to own 100 shares at three cents times 100. <laughs> How much is three cents times a hundred people? That's what I would like to know. How much is 300 pennies? It's three dollars. <coughs> See, people always with the negativity. Before you allow somebody to just finish their sentence, yeah, but it's volatile. Stop the bullshit. Let me tell y'all what people are trying to scare you away from. You might be wrong and lose three dollars. Let me say it again. You might be wrong and lose three dollars in the future. I say it again. You might be wrong and lose three dollars. So if you spend three cents times a hundred, that's three dollars. You spent three cents times a hundred to own the right to a hundred shares in the future for a lesser dollar amount than it would actually be. Meaning, if the stock is $8 right now and I buy me a, a option contract and that shit jumps skyrockets to $80. <laughs> and I turn around, I'm like, yo, you know what? I believe it's gonna be this $8 joint. I'm gonna put my money in for this $8 joint to eventually be 20 something dollars whatever the hell the case may be the point of the case is i got the stocks for the low low times 100 so let's say the ratio is eight dollars to eighty dollars let's say that's just a scenario i'm gonna just make up a scenario so basically 80 times 100 is eight thousand dollars but because of when i bought it in the past in preparation for the future when the future comes and it's $80 a share, I can still buy it. I gotta now buy the shares that I have the right to own for $8 a piece, because that's what I put my money in for. So I buy those for $8 a piece, that's $800. I, I Now that I own them, because remember, I paid $3 to have the right to own 100 shares. I don't necessarily have to pay for each one of those shares times the dollar amount that it is in the future. And then I can sell the contract for the premium, which means it's the pre that's another conversation. I'm going to teach that tomorrow. Let's just focus on this. I pay for the right to own 100 shares. My right to own those 100 shares in the future will be by $8 each of the 100 shares. I paid $3 to be in a position to have the right to pay $8 times 100 in the future. 
So I have to pay, I have to have the $800. But in the future, it's $80 a share. So I have the right to sell $8 times 100 on the market for $80 times 100. So I have the right to sell. I have the right to buy or execute the right to own the shares officially for $800 and then sell it back for $8,000. Then I make $7,200 and $3 put me in a position to do so. One penny a share. And guess what? If it doesn't work out, if this shit contradicts my strike price, guess what? I lose $3. But let me ask you something. Can you pick 10 companies right now that you believe, just using common sense, should be doing better in the future? And can you pick 10 companies that you believe should be doing bad or lesser? If you really took the time out to think, oh yeah, the internet streaming shit, those should be doing bad in the future because people going to be outside. The airports and the hotels, those should be doing good. Yeah, two years from now, they should be doing good. One year from now, they should be doing good. Six months from now, they should be doing good. These are called options. You put option, you put down. That means that you're putting your money on it going down. Call option, you put your money on it going up. And either event, you're not waiting for someone to buy anything that you own. On the market, once you press buy or sell, the trade takes place effective immediately. Whatever deal that you made is honored in real time. So you ain't sitting here like real estate hoping someone buys this house. I got this short sale. Hopefully someone buy it. You're not doing that. <laughs> So, when people tell you, yo, it's volatile, but you could lose your money with those option contracts. So, I'm going to say this. I risk the chance of losing $3 because the $3 risk that I took can make me $7,200. I say it again. If I lose, I lose $3. If I gain, I gain $7,200. What the fuck is someone telling you you losing for? How the fuck do you lose? And I gotta, I, I gotta speak with this vulgarity because people out there don't know what they're talking about. And if I do 10 of these things, if I, all I gotta do is get one right. If I do this 10 times, that's $30 I put up. If I create deals that's similar to the first one, and it's three cents, it's three cents per share, on the option contract is three cents, so that's three cents on every share, I'm spending $3. I do this 10 times, this, this kind of logic, 10 times, I spend $30 for the future. Each of my three dollars is worth in or around seven thousand two hundred dollars granted these are different companies different circumstances different strike prices i don't mind putting up thirty dollars into the future because in the future they'll give it to me for pennies in real time it costs a whole lot of money a whole lot more money when we do it one week from now two weeks from now <clears throat> a month from now 51 days i got a call for for july 31st that's gonna cost a lot more money but if I say, yo, let me put my money into it. Now, guess what? My daughter's about to be a year old. You know what that means? A year that went by that quick. But you know what that means for me? For the last two months, I've been walking into things that I prepared for before she was born because I had put options out because I was telling people about the political polarization of global uncertainty where I believed that the market had no choice but to take a plummet because we was already past due for a year and change. Because every seven years we look at a recession of some sort and we in the economy was looking good and we went past the seven year personality of the market or behavior so i had my money on the puts i was in the puts so i was in the money i was in the money last month i'm in the money this month and i was in the money the month before last because of things that i invested in a year ago which i'm here today and let me tell you this in august my birthday month <clears throat> i'm walking into the things that i invested in in July, I'm walking into things that I invested in because I invest so much into the future because it's so cheap that if you do it consistently enough, then every day you're living in the future and then you could just execute trades based on your advantage or then you sacrifice losing your three dollars, sacrifice losing your ten dollars, sacrifice losing your fifteen. Or at the very least, you could sell your contract because when it was worth three cents, it's probably worth fifteen cents. So if your contract costs you three dollars to operate or to, to own the options contract because it was three cents option so it cost you three dollars then I could sell the contract itself for five times the amount of money so the option contract cost you three hundred dollars <throat> you can sell the contract in the future when it's worth more money instead of even paying the money to own the shares you could just sell the agreement because the agreement is worth more money because you're closer to the future and somebody's out there that wants to buy it closer into the future but they feel a way 
closer to the present. They feel a way about the present that they want to buy it. When you press sell, somebody's already there available to buy your agreement that you invested in last year that you ain't feeling too good about, but the premium is highest. You sell it for the premium. So you can sell the agreement itself, and I'll explain this later. <clears throat> Listen. Listen. These people that be, I be really thinking people are agents or they're just completely ignorant. It's a combination. <laughs> it's a combination. It's a combination. Because, when they, yo, but tell them about the volatility. Yo, I just said the volatility is what's making us the 20 cents over and over. It, shit got to be volatile if it's not streamlined in a certain way. If it has a certain level of predictability going up and down, that means it's volatile. Duh. And I said that already when we were day trading. That's the whole reason you want to day trade because the market is so scary. When, it, when you're dealing with a scary ass market that you can't predict, that's the best time to day trade because the money is going up and down so much. You can steal your 20 cents over and over. You can steal your one dollars over and over, your 30 cents over and over, your 10 cents over and over. Who are you telling? Who are you telling? <laughs> Yo, I'm just, and this is what I'm saying. People spend so much time telling you what they think they know instead of spending time to just listen because maybe whoever taught you didn't complete the book before they started teaching. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I was perfectly honest with you. It stands to reason you could lose $3 in the future, you could lose $30 in the future. But if I surmise, and I told you, I, I did the, the greatest probability of me being wrong which would be eight times out of 10. But the one time I'm right, will not only yield my profit, it will pay for the 10 times by itself that I put in. All I gotta do is be right once. If I think of 10 companies that should be doing better and 10 companies that should be doing bad, I don't believe any of us would be wrong eight times out of 10 on either side of the up or down. In fact, it should be the complete opposite. And in fact, it is the complete opposite. But I switched it around. You're going to be right eight times out of ten. On both ends. For the common sense, essential businesses that are suffering will do better two years from now. If the world goes halfway back to what it should be doing. But I switched it and made it like you're going to lose. And you're only going to be right two times out of ten. Because even if you was only right two times out of ten... You're going to make your money. And that's all I needed to know. So I'm not going to count an individual loss. I'm going to shoot 10 times. Because the law of probability tells me I'm supposed to be right 8 times out of 10. And what I do when I'm investing, I wonder if I reciprocate it. If I'm wrong as much as it says I should be right, is it still beneficial if I'm right the amount of times that's left over? <clears throat> and what it tells me is I would be right at least... The one time that I'm right will pay for everything and still give me a great profit. So if that's the case, I'm good. Huh? Oh, nah. Real talk. Real talk. So, yeah. <clears throat> Real talk. So, look. You go to I am brother polite die app. I am Brother Polite. Dot app. You buy your class for Sunday. I'll have the illustrations and the breakdowns and everything like that. This new phone I got is amazing. I got a screen recorder, so I can include my audio or take it out. So I can include my audio and I can um, make sure that you can see what I do. So I was thinking about incorporating something where I could just go to the sites and you see it. I press it and I could do the narrative while I'm doing it. I think that would be dope. That'd be super dope. So I'm gonna play with that. Everybody becomes an expert when you teach it, but where was you guys when I was learning? Alright, 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 guys, with the links in there. 
All right. <laughs> okay. So let's get it in, man. Let's get it in. I love you guys. I had a great build with you guys. I had a great build. It was exceptional. Great, great build. Just go to IamBrotherPolite.app. Get your class. Take your notes. Don't leave this thing struggling, man. If you sit in that class and you don't realize something, if you heard enough today and you know, damn, that shit makes a lot of sense. Take the class, get technical, and do what you do. You don't need, people always make you think you need a whole lot of money. No, you could build your money up. What else are you doing? You in the crib. Just You in the house doing what? Build your money up. Do your thing, man. Build your money up. Create your own checks. And getting paid from one week to the next is a slave-ass opportunity that they got us happy about. Some of y'all getting paid twice a week when you are working. It's slavery, man. You should get paid every day. You should make your money every single day. You shouldn't be out here waiting to the end of the week. Stuff happens during the week. You got to wait to the end of the week to reconcile the things that happen on a day-to-day -day basis. That's insane. You should be getting paid every day. And then that would teach you the discipline to save your money. Because if you spend every day, you don't look like nothing at the end of the week. They got us all trapped up, man. This is a trap. People talking about they be trapping. This is the trap. Yeah, pharmaceutical companies look good. I like immunomedics. I was invested in immuno immunomedics when it was $9 like two weeks and change ago. My shit is at $22 right now, and I still ain't sell it. Because I ain't, I ain't investing that on a swing trade. <clears throat> I'm saying, yo, whoever come out with that vaccine, if I got my money in one of those joints. So I'm just playing with it. How do you know what to put a thousand or two thousand or three thousand dollars in or a lot of money? You don't know per se. That's why you need Monopoly money. That's why I do the day trading and the swing trading to make enough money that I could play Monopoly with. Because when you play Monopoly and you get a lot of money, yo, give me that house on Baltic Ave. Yo, you know, I want two houses there. <clears throat> give me that hotel. You start playing games when you're making the money. So make your money off the market and that'll dictate how much you're willing to spread out. And that's what your portfolio is all about. The different things you got going on. You got call options, you got put options, you got leap options. You swing trading, you day trading, you, you stockpiling stock because you feel just i'm just sitting here for the long run with this stock over here i think this stock is going to do real good over here you spread it out but the spreads come from the monies that you're making you don't just sit here and use your personal savings you make that money and then you tell yourself none of that money you making exists because you can't even prophesize you was going to make this money before i taught you about it so now that you're making it you're going to apply the same sick logic of being afraid to put money somewhere this is the thing that's making you eat so you spread the money out. You do different things because you understand with all the different things that you're doing, you're always gonna stay in front. There's no way everything you're doing is wrong. Your losses cannot amount to your wins. It's just a fact. <clears throat> it's a fact, your losses cannot amount to your wins. You, when, you follow my, when you follow my BPB, 10, when you follow my BPB, my BPB 10 system, you're going to be like, okay. BPB 10. You follow it, you're going to be like, okay. You hedge your bet, you're doing all sorts of stuff to make sure you, know, you good money. But we'll have that discussion. We're going to do the options and everything on our next build. Probably tomorrow we're going to do the options. I have the whiteboard and I'm going to talk that talk. Let me get the whiteboard out for y'all tomorrow and let's talk that talk, man. Let's talk that talking and go through some numbers and strategies. And then I'll just dare somebody. Tell me, tell me what's the risk factor in this. Yes, I'm risking losing three or thirty dollars. So I could potentially gain seven thousand two hundred. <clears throat> and if I'm right about eight things, I done made over seventy thousand dollars. Like, bruh. Oh my goodness. It's like the logic is crazy. That's how I know people don't know what they're talking about. Just invest in the future so the future is cheaper. That's all you got to do. Invest in the future so it's cheaper. Invest in the future so it's cheaper. Because if you invest in the future every month, if every month you put $3 aside, 
to invest in one year from today? <laughs> if every month you put $30 aside to invest in two years from today? If every month you put another $10 aside to invest in six months from today? Eventually, every month, you'll be living in the things you prepared for in the past. And that's what you want to do. You want to live in the moment. If you invest enough into your future, it's pennies. And eventually you'll live there. And if you do it consistently every month, you always live in the future where there's an opportunity to capitalize. That's a whole nother strategy. I'm on. It's, just, it's crazy. Why, why spend on everything costs a lot of money right now? Even though right now things are cheaper than it's ever been in our life. But if you invest in the future one year from today, every month, then every month you got a nice, pleasant surprise for you. You never have to work again in your life if you start preparing from this day forward. And you, I mean, you can invest in a year from now. You can invest in 11 months from now. You can invest 10 months from now. And all in this one month. Just, yo, just ball out and throw the whole $50 out there and spread it out. So you got almost the whole of one year from now, one year, one month from now, one year, two months from now. Yo, spread it out. Pennies off of millionaires. I'm too smart to be broke. And it costs too much money to be poor. Pennies off of millionaires. I love you guys. You go to the website, check it out. Have a good time. I hope something is registering to the point you realize what we've been missing out on and they haven't been teaching us nothing. How many, how many live streams have you turned on hearing people talk? Hey guys, you want to make some quick money? They don't tell you that you could put some pennies of a dollar in the future. They, try, they People looking to beat you in the head, man. I'm telling you. And I'm not saying they're not teaching you something that's effective, but a lot of times they're conversations with people that can't afford it. They're teaching you the truth, but that's just a different conversation for different people. And I don't give a damn if I could afford it. If you give me a, a three cent hustle, if you give me a penny hustle that can make me thousands of dollars, I'm all over that. I'm not too good. <laughs> I'm not too good for that. So again, I check y'all later. I love y'all. Peace.